So just another quick video about the improvements to the multi-BPM analysis in the BPM editor in the latest version of Virtus D-Day 2021, which is built 70.32 at the time of this recording. So what's that about? Well, as you probably know, in all D-Day software, the BPM is important because that's what you use for synchronous, that's what you use for, uh, for any kind of assistant, um, ass assistant mixing or any type of, uh, of BPM aligned effects all that kind of stuff. So BPMs are important, but normally there's only one BPM on a track. So that's called good and fine, and that's the one in here, and it's just ready to be used right. Right after it's analyzed, we have the BPMs. But some tracks have more than one BPM. So for instance, this track that I've created, it go times for 105 to 116 BPMs during the breakdown. So let me try loading that track and click it a little bit. You can see it's 116, 116, 116, so Virtual Data doesn't know that it has multiple BPMs. So uh, that we can tell it in the BPM editor. So if I go into the BPM editor here, um, it has a few features, like it can half or double the, uh, the BPM. That's probably the most commonly used feature when the BPM has been detected wrongly. It also has variable BPMs where you can set anchors and do your big grid and stuff like that. But the feature that's been improved on here is the multiple BPM feature here that detects that the track has, has multiple BPMs and set them up. So let me just try to clean that one. See, we've got a little red line here. And now it says 105 BPM instead of the 116. But if I zoom, you can see it changes to 116 right after the breakdown here. So it's detected that they've got a secondary BPM right here. So that's great. That's the positive BPM feature. And why is that great? Well. Now it also knows it over here, so that's 105, that's 116. So that means we can use synchronize to both mix into the track and out of the track uh, uh, for, with tracks that align pretty well with 105 and 116 BPM. So let's try doing that just to show it. So I grab a track that's 118 here. Sorry, start with the one low one. I grab a track that's 105 here and play it. So it's here. And then if I click synchronize now when it says 116, it's a crazy change. But if I go down here on the other side and click synchronize again, then it's a tiny change because it's close to 105. And that actually means that now I can mix into it using sync. So the volume down a bit so you can hear me. And then if we would let it play to the other side of the climb here, we can actually mix into the next track, which is gonna be this one, maybe, under 18 BPM. So right now, I actually can click sync because the, the range is too large compared to my allowed BPM range that I've set up. But I, if I went, wait till after the breakdown, then I can synchronize because then the BPM changes. So like that. So that's the multi BPM feature, and that's actually been there for a while. But it used to be that that uh, that it has to, uh, that this thing had to be for an entire minute uh, that the change was uh, were there for for the uh, the multi BPM analysis to work. So it has to be kind of big changes, and it had to last for a long time. Now it's become a lot more fine grained, and that means you can use it for other types of tracks, like maybe someone that has. BPMs are just a little variable in different places of the track, and the idea is still the same. So you can use synchronize and other uh, BPM uh, assisted features uh, with the track, even though it has multiple BPMs built into it. So if I, for, for instance, load, load 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton here, that's detected at 105 BPM basically, 
And if I go into the BPM editor, that's what it's going to say. But I can now do the uh, reanalysis here. So even though it just has minor changes, you can see it now sets two new ones. So this is a secondary one, and this is a third BPM. So I go down here. You say it's 105, it's 106, and it's 106. So now I can actually also mix into the beginning and out of the end of this track using sync. And that I wasn't used to, that wasn't the that wasn't really usable before because it wouldn't be detected with all these BPMs. Another one uh, could be superstition. By Stevie Wonder. Load that one. It says a 99. But I know that track is all over the place, but Virtual DJ doesn't know until now where I can use the multi BPM feature. So again, I go into the BPM editor, go down here, and I realize multiple BPMs. So now I can see there's actually a lot of them. So at the end here, it's a 99. Here, it's around 99.2, I think. Here's 101. Here's 100. And so on and so forth. Just zoom out so it's easier to see all these different B BPMs. So now you can use sync to make something like this. Uh, it used to be that people would warp this in things like Ableton Live to get like a steady drumming. That kind of ruins the mood of a track a little bit. But now you can safely mix into the 98 and 99 BPM section. And you can maybe mix out over here uh, of the 102 BPM section because you can use synchronize in these sections because it has now multiple BPM detections. And of course, you can also see it out here if you click around the track that it changes down here. So that's pretty cool and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use that quite a lot in the future. So that's the uh, improved multi-BPM analysis in the BPM editor in the latest version of Virtual GDA 2021.